This is Aisha and welcome to a new video of Reader Day Club. Today I'm going to be talking about the books that I wish I could read again for the first time. Now uh, there are a number of books uh, that in hindsight have done a lot for me as a reader and if I could go back in time I would like to read these books all over again. Now what defines these books and you know what sets them apart is that they have somehow changed my understanding and perspective about a lot of things, uh, most of all literature and um, whenever I think about these books I think of this very famous quote by uh, Flaubert, uh, do not read as children do to amuse yourself or like the ambitious for the purpose of instruction, read in order to live. So the first book I want to talk about is Stoner by John Williams. Now this book is about an academic who leads a very solitary and withdrawn life. So the book examines life, existence. The writing is very straightforward so it doesn't overwhelm you considering the themes that it deals with. Now a lot of people find this book depressing and dull. Um, I do get why but I don't agree because I think this book can teach you a lot about solitude and just living the literary life as a reader and uh, it's also very modern in the way that it examines the depths of human emotion and human experiences and how fragile and intense life can get in more ways than we realize. Next book that I want to talk about is Ernest Hemingway's A Movable Feast. Now I simply added this book to this list because I finished reading this just two days back and I just wanted to talk a bit about it. So uh, it's a memoir about Hemingway's life in Paris during the 1920s. Hemingway paints a very creative and to the point portrait of Paris which I loved. It's also a rewarding read because he talks a lot about the discipline of writing, the role of hunger in the creative writing process and how lonely writing can be. Hemingway recreates out of his memories a nostalgic and moving portrait of Paris and his relationships with people around him. Some of them were prominent writers like Gertrude Stein, James Joyce and of course F. Scott Fitzgerald. So the next book is Clarice Lispector's The Passion According to G.H. Now this book examines the inner life of the protagonist and just in a very curiously strange manner. It's so introspective and lively because Lispector leaves so much to the imagination while also giving a philosophical account of a woman who is so deeply connected with and shaped by words. So the book made me realize how introspective and how moving language can be even more so because I've never come across a book that reads like this. Now Lispector touches on the meaning of life and existence in a very existential and visceral manner. Existential search for purpose and identity, the ambiguous nature of words, the poetic textures of living you know the book examines all these things in a very breathtaking moving deeply affecting manner. So that is the passion uh, according to G.H. The next one is Machado de Assis's The Posthumous Memoirs of Brasco Bas. Now this is an unusual one. Why? Because when I read this book I did not like it and I think almost through the halfway point I, I even felt like I should just stop reading it but I'm so glad that I didn't stop reading it because weeks after the book 
hit me like it really sunk in i realized how imaginative and witty the book actually is so it's about the narrator who is dead and these are his autobiographical and philosophical musings on life death decay love desire and the human condition the book taught me a lot about the art of novel writing what i loved the most about this book is that it was very aware of its own language and you know even though it deals with themes like death and decay it's still written in a very uplifting in a very playful in a very um lively manner do not be frightened said she my enmity does not kill it affirms itself through life you are alive i desire no other torment i'm alive i asked digging my nails into my palms as if to certify myself of my existence yes worm you are alive you must not fear losing that tattered rags that are your pride for a few hours yet you shall still taste the bread of pain and the wine of misery you are alive now even in your madness you are alive and should your mind retrieve an instant of sense you will say that you wish to live so that is this one The next book is Jack Kerouac's On the Road. Now I have done a whole video about this book on the channel which you can watch. Um I had many preconceived notions about this book before I started reading it and I am so happy because it proved me wrong. The book taught me how to study and appreciate literature in a very objective manner and I had such a fun time reading it. It is so fast-paced, it's so imaginative. it's so thrilling and spontaneous that you don't realize where when time passes as you're reading it now the next two books are harold bloom's how to read and why and john milton's paradise lost now hands down harold bloom's how to read and why is one of the best books to read it offers insights on the process of reading how to engage with literature and how to appreciate literature in a way that's profitable to you as a reader and as a self aware individual plus harold bloom recommends so many different types of short stories plays poetry and novels so if you want good book recommendations this is where you'll find them you can open the book to any page and read just a single chapter even and gain something from it Bloom's understanding of literature is so vast and insightful and refined that even if you are down in the dumps, you know, struggling with a reading slump, Harold Bloom's whimsical and intelligent writing will get you out of that. In my Instagram review of the book, I wrote that Harold Bloom shines a penetrating light into the many labyrinths and recesses of literature. He bridges the gap between the self and reading and gives you tons of recommendations in the process. Now, the last one on this list is Paradise Lost by John Milton. Now I couldn't end this list without mentioning this book it's again one of my favorites I have a whole video review of this book as well which you can find on the channel Now what can I say about this book other than what's already been said it taught me how to read and completely immerse myself into the imagination of a book The poem tells the story of Adam and Eve's fall from grace in the garden of Eden with the use of rich symbolism and vivid imagery the role of satan and his wisdom believe it or not has been so beautifully expressed i said this in my review of the book as well that i'd read this book over and over again for satan alone okay so these were my recommendations i have so many more that i can add to this list there is the sea the sea by iris murdoch mrs dalloway by virginia wolf Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky, um, One Hundred Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. How can I forget that one? And of course, Norwegian Wood, Norwegian Wood, and of course, Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. That book, like my Norwegian book, was the book that made me fall in love with reading and literature. So I guess. That's it this brings me to the end of this video thank you so much for watching if you have any recommendations for me please let me know in the comment section below this is Aisha from Reader Day Club and I'll see you guys next time